Kevin in Long Island, New York writes to me, Paul, my question is, what level of effort goes into designing the power supply portion of an audio amplifier or, or preamplifier compared to the audio stages of these components? What power supply topologies are most commonly used, switching or linear? That's a great question. And the answer really depends on the company. I can speak for PS Audio, but I would say in general, designers spend much more time working on the audio stages themselves because that's the more obvious place to make a difference in sound quality. And for the longest time, when we first started the company, we did the same thing. I mean, that's, you're making an audio amplifier or a preamplifier. You put your efforts into the preamplifier. You figure out, all right, how much power does this thing need? And you attach an adequate power supply. Done. I'd say that's probably 90% of the time that that's what happens. Over the years, as, well, let me back up. We discovered fairly early on, mid 80s or so, how important the power supply is. That in fact, an audio amplifier or preamplifier is really only a modulator of the power supply. So the power supply has to be as perfect or more perfect than the amplifier that is modulating it. So power supply and here's your valve turning on and off according to the music, the power supply. You are connecting your power supply to your speaker. You're connecting your power supply to the power amplifier. Whatever you're feeding, that, that's all that's happening. The audio circuit in response to the music is modulating the output of the power supply. And that's really important because if you don't put enough attention into the power supply, you will hear the difference. So at PS Audio, we have for decades now put as much attention into the power supply as we have the audio circuit. And over time, we're not the only ones, but I think we have inspired quite a number of companies to take the same approach as they hear and realize how important all this is. Having said that, one of the cool things about that philosophy is that while ideas on audio amplification circuits vary all the time, I mean, we are always striving to up the slew rate, to uh, lower the feedback, to uh, create an amplifier that is more stable and uh, operating without any trouble, w without the use of feedback. All this kind of stuff that we do, uh, we, we still have, I don't know, probably another decade or two of work to do on that. The power supplies, we can kind of plug them in now because we have already spent years figuring out how to make those great. But occasionally we'll figure out, or a new regulator will come out, we'll figure out a new way to do it. But in general, now that we have that down, that is more modular and we can kind of plug that in and, and go with it. Uh, I would say the answer to the last part of the question, most high-end audio products use linear power supplies. Certainly all of ours use linear power supplies, except for our Class D amplifiers. We are moving over time to a greater use of switch mode power supplies, but only because recently the advances made in those are starting now to outweigh the performance of linear power supplies in very limited uh, circumstances, but it's happening. Switch mode power supplies, which can be regulated and put out tons of power is all, anyway, we can go into that later on. But yeah, over time, we are kind of moving towards that. So you might see PS Audio products that over the last 50 years have had linear power supplies now moving towards switch mode power supplies because they are now outperforming their linear cousins, brothers, whatever. All right. Thanks for the question. Take it easy.